Ooh. Well, I feel like there's a bit of that in all the books. Like, Amy, Amy is basically more like me in high school because she's really into theater and loves to do theater. So that was in Amy and Roger. And in Second Chance Summer, there's the neighbors who are writing a screenplay. And in Since You've Been Gone, uh, Emily's parents are playwrights. And in Unexpected Everything, one of the friends, Tom, wants to be an actor. So you get to see uh, the play and Palmer's stage manager. So I feel like it all makes its way into my books. Um, probably the biggest way it does is um, one of the things you do when you're training to be an actor is you sort of have to create a character backstory um, just because you only have the lines on the page so you sort of have to fill in kind of all the gaps and I still really do that when I write like before I start writing a book I'll generally take a few months and just either write longhand in a notebook or write in my computer and just sort of kind of do the same thing but for the characters I'm writing where I figure out even the secondary characters, what their all their siblings' names are and what their parents' names are, and and a lot of stories and, and details that a lot of times don't even make it into the book, but I know it, and I feel like it. Sometimes it might just be like a line or something, but I've like created a whole scene that we don't necessarily see. So that's probably the way I use the acting training the most. Um, and you had a second part to the question. I'm sorry. It was if I would write a story about theater. I've definitely thought about that just because. It was like such a big part of my life in high school. Like I was obsessed with like being in the plays, and all my friends were in the plays. We were in like the drama group. Uh, I definitely thought about it because I feel like it's such a fun, like, like little. Thing. I was like, I was thinking it'd be fun to like write a play and then write a book about people doing that play. Um, but that also seems really hard. So <laughs> I have no plans to do it right now. But I would love to write. A book about sort of like the three months it takes to like audition and get cast and be in the play and then put it up and because there's always drama and people always have like crushes on their co-stars and I think it'd be fun. It was it was fun for a while to have a secret identity. It was uh, it was it sort of let me kind of play around in a different genre. Um, the Katie Finn books tend to be much more plot driven and a little more extreme. Like. People are like pulling off a heist at a prom, and people are like trying to get revenge on each other, and like holding grudges for five years, and like it's all a little. It's more like what you would see in a soap opera or like a drama. Uh, not a drama. It's more like um, uh, just a little more heightened and not as realistic as the books I read under Morgan Matson. Um, so it was fun. It was sort of fun to write one and then switch back and write the other. But I feel like the con is it. It was just getting too time consuming because um, when I was working on the last Katie Fitt trilogy. That meant I was doing two books, like kind of at the same time. Like two books came out in the same year, and it was just too much for me. And I felt like I was kind of always late on both projects. So um, I really liked doing it, but um, I just feel like there's not quite enough time anymore. So I'm gonna focus more on the Morgan Matson books. But it was fun for a while to sort of be able to like slip into a different mode and and write like a funny short chapter that ends on like a cliffhanger. Um, so that was really fun. I feel like it's. Um, it's sort of just the only thing that's ever felt comfortable for me to write. Um, uh, someone was asking me yesterday if I would ever do fantasy or something other than realistic contemporary, but it's just not feel, it doesn't feel very comfortable. I mean, it's just that's sort of the stories I've always gravitated toward. Um, I love writing about stories that feel real, hopefully with characters that you feel like you get to know by the end and feel like real people. Um, and it's sort of one of the best things when, when people want to know what's happening to the characters years later or like what happened to their relationships because that makes it feel like they're real people because I feel like they're real people. Um, so, so yeah, it's just it's always been the genre I've really been most, uh, most drawn to and feel most comfortable in. Um, and I really like, I, it's, it's kind of crazy, like I really feel like I need to get everything right. Like when I was writing Amy and Roger, I needed to like do the same road trip. And when I was writing Second Chance Summer, I needed to go and stay in that town in Pennsylvania to um, make sure I got all the details right. And so I feel like I would have trouble writing fantasy because I, it, was, it was almost like I, I wouldn't be able to research it, <laughs> if that makes any sense, because I like things to be as realistic as possible. Just after I said I'd only ever write realistic, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I really think about it a lot, and we were talking, my editor and I were talking about for the paperback, if we should do like a little chapter from it, like to have as like a paperback extra in the US, but in the end we decided not to. I kind of feel like if I do it, I sort of kind of want to do what Rainbow Rowell did and write the whole book. Like I don't know if I want to just write like a little bit of it. Um, 
So it's definitely something I think about. I think about those characters a lot. Like I, there's like a big like twist I have in my mind or something that happens in the book, and so I think I might need to let it kind of bubble on the back of the stove for a while and um, and see what comes of it. But I do think about it, and I, I keep thinking about sort of what this book would be and the adventures of the characters and. So at some point, maybe. That's sort of all I'm going to say. I have no plans. I'm not writing it right now. But it's definitely something I'd love to kind of reach for in the future. Teen self. Um, well, myself now, number one would be skydiving, because I really want to do it, but it really scares me. And so I would, I, I, I'm not going to do it unless someone like gives it to me on a list. Because it's, 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 it's exactly one of those things. It's something I want to do, but I'm scared to do, and so could use the extra push. Um, I want to learn how to drive on the other side of the road. Cause I feel like I want to like take road trips in countries where the driving is different, and it really scares me a lot. Um, so I'd like to do that. And hmm, what would the third one be? Um, maybe get a cat. Like it's it's something that I I think would be a lot of fun, but I have also never had a cat, and so it's scary. And I don't know how my dog would react. So it's it's <laughs> that's definitely a thing that it's like I'm interested in, but it's also terrifying. Um, so that's such a great question. The the stuff in it, originally that was all the book was. Like I started wanting to write a book without a narrative. So it, the whole book was just going to be an email and then a letter and then a journal entry and then a picture and then a note. And there would be no kind of anything linking it together. Um, and I got about 20 pages in and was like, this is really hard. <laughs> and <laughs> also no one is writing in their notebook this much when they're on a road trip. Like you're not like in the car, like ignoring the cute boy next to you and like writing in your journal. Like it was beginning to strain the bounds of like realism. Um, but I still loved that idea so much. So when I started like going back and then actually writing it, you know, from Amy's voice with a narrative, I wanted to keep all that. Um, so that was why it's such a big part of the book, because when I started it, I thought that was going to be the book, which now seems crazy. I'm like, what was I thinking? Um, so that's really how it started, and it, it, yeah, it came from sort of wanting to tell a road trip story. I wanted to tell two journeys. I wanted to tell an emotional journey at the same time someone was making a physical journey, so that at the end of it, you could look back and physically realize how far you'd come, but also emotionally, that someone started in one place, you know, mentally and emotionally and ended up in a completely different one. And I really loved the idea of being able to sort of mark time that way by moving through space. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It absolutely did. So Since You've Been Gone is the only time I very consciously based a character on a real person. Um, I based the character of Son on my friend Amalia and on our friendship because when I moved to New York we met and we became like instant best friends and like Son and Emily we spent all our time together. We just had a blast. We loved each other's company, and it went on like that for about four years. And then she moved to London, and I moved to Los Angeles. And so we sort of had to learn how to be friends when we couldn't just walk down the street and see each other. We weren't, you know, talking constantly because of the time difference. So I wanted to write a book that was about both that feeling of friendship and finding someone that you just connect with, but also learning to be friends with distance. Um, so she was, especially in the first draft, she was very much just my friend Amalia. Um, and then my editor was like, you need to, you can't make her so nice. Like, because I was like, it's my friend and she's great. And he was like, you need to make her like a real character with flaws and problems and she can't be so, there's nice all the time. So I was, I sort of had to pull it back from, they base so much on realism and, and add a little bit more sort of conflict. Um, but that, that book is basically a love letter to my friendship with Amalia and, and how much I love her and value her and I dedicated the book to her. Um, and so that was sort of, it was very much uh, because of that. But I also really wanted to write about all different kinds of friendships in that book. I wanted to write about a friendship with your sibling, a new friend, like Franca Collins are very old friends, um, being friends with a boy and it's just platonic, being friends with a boy and realize maybe you have feelings for them. So I sort of wanted to come at it from, from all the different angles. Memorable advice about writing. Um, I feel like one of the best pieces of advice I got was just to finish. Um, because I sort of, before I finished my first book, I was sort of the queen of 30 pages, that I could start and write anything for 30 pages. And I was so happy to do that. It was like, you're diving into the world, and it's really exciting, and it's really fun. And then after 30 pages, I'd be like, oh, now I actually have to make tough choices, and this is hard, and I don't want to watch television. So then it just always seemed easier to like start a new thing and write 30 pages of that thing, because it was simpler, and there were no problems yet. Um, 
and I got the piece of advice that you just have to push through that. You have to finish something. And um, I remember really vividly the moment when I realized I was going to finish my first book. And it was just, I, it was like going up a roller coaster and then like beginning to go down the track. And I could, I, it, it was, I remember this so vividly. I was in my apartment and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to finish this book tonight. And it was, it was this huge moment. And then when I actually finished it, it was, it was so big for me because like, I was like, oh, I wrote a book. And just being able to say that was huge. And then I knew when I started my next one that I could do it because I'd already done it. It was like this weird kind of logic, but um, I feel like if I hadn't sort of gotten that push to just like, don't make it perfect, doesn't have to be great, just push on through to the end, I might still be writing like the first 30 pages of stuff and never finishing anything. Maybe since you've been gone, just because it is so much about me and my friend and there's, and there's like so many little like tiny like references to things that, and it's just, I feel like a lot of that book is like my heart and my friendship with Amalia. And so it feels very special to me in a lot of ways. And like it has some of our like phrases we use together and like little inside jokes. And so I feel like that's sort of the one that, um, like I don't really reread it, but I know that like it's there and sort of I've like captured a moment in our friendship and it's kind of been preserved. So yeah, that's probably the one that like, you know, is the most uh, emotional for me. Thank you guys so much. This is amazing. I honestly, I say this, the, the fans of the Philippines are the best fans and you guys have been so kind and so supportive and so great over the years. And I feel like I've talked to so many of you on Twitter or Instagram and I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. And it just, this has honestly been such an amazing trip and getting to meet so many of you has just been fantastic. And thank you so much for the warm welcome and for embracing my books and liking my characters. And it really, it means so, so much to me. Thank you so much.